Three takeaways from Atlanta United's 2-1 win over Inter Miami in Game Two of their first round best of three series here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Or I should say over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, sitting with the Thailand Henry at the best after an emotional win. Chandi Silva's goal late in the match, clinching a 2-1 win for Atlanta United and forcing a winner to call Game Three at Chase Stadium next Saturday. Guys, let's just. Get right into it. Takeaway number one, just the match itself. You know, after match one, which Inter Miami dominated, a lot of people figured, you know, it'll be the same way in match two. Um, it wasn't. Atlanta United with a really good start. Unfortunately, Braggison had the howler, but this team never gave up. They scored through Derek Williams to level, and then Chande Silva laid on to give them the win. So... Just the overall performance was terrific from Atlanta United, and ultimately it's a victory. So let's start with that, maybe with Tyler. Yeah, I mean, I think it was um, it was overall like kind of what you expected in the sense that Atlanta came out, right? And you knew that they were going to be a little bit better, a little flashier here at, at the Benz. We'll talk about the crowd in a minute, but you had the crowd behind you. Um, the, the Brad thing, man, it, look, I, I don't think I don't think that should have been a goal. I think it should have been called back. We'll agree um, and disagree on that, but ultimately it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, wait wait till you see the, the reasoning from the refs, though, whenever it gets mm. put out. It might already be out now, but it, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that would have been a crappy way to end up out of the, yeah. out of the playoffs. They dug in, right? They, they had better spells of possession. They were more dangerous. This wasn't a game where you had two fluky goals, right? This was a game where you, you put together some some pretty significant spells of possession. You took the game to Miami, and it ebbed and flowed for sure, right? There were there were moments where Miami, it felt like a goal was coming for them too. Yeah. But she shut down Messi again. Messi has not had much luck against them. And he nodded knock on wood. That continues right. down to Fort Lauderdale. Um, and you handled business, and Shande Silva came out and told everybody to shut up. Yeah. And at, at any point in the season, he needed to do that. This was it. So I'm happy for him. Henry. Yeah, it was. It was just a beautiful game. Like I, I don't know if I can even really explain it, but it's just this is a team that looks different than what we've seen all season. Absolutely. Like their spells of possession. Their their ball progression their their interplay it's just it's it's so different and it's like no one no one really expected this to be a close series it's the supporters shield winners with four of the best players in the league uh you know three yeah. world champions and all that uh against the team that barely squeaked in on the last day like it, it is a mismatch yeah. and atlanta hasn't made Miami's life easy. And, you know, it, it, it was very encouraging to see some of the stuff, the way the goals were put together, the way Atlanta was approaching Miami's box. Like, they were there to show that they weren't just laying down and, and taking it. They were going to fight for every inch. They were going to fight for every minute. And they ultimately deserved the win tonight. And, you know, it, it's just a great reward for the fans. Rob Valentino even talked about it in the presser, you know, he was, he was so happy. Like he, yeah. he was overcome with emotion with, with just, first of all, how, how the team responded and, and second of all, with, with the result. So no, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really cool thing to, to be able to witness here at the stadium. And uh, yeah, we'll see what, what happens from here because anything can happen now. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that um, a little bit later on, but yeah, as Tyler said, you know, these weren't flute goals. These were, very well taken goals. Williams with a well taken header off another great assist by Pedro Amador. I mean, how many times we talked about him this postseason? And then Silva with a terrific strike past calendar for the win in stoppage time. Uh, takeaway number two the crowd. You guys mentioned it over 68,000. I believe I saw the attendance number was at Mercedes Benz Stadium this evening. I was watching at home. I couldn't make it out to this match, unfortunately. But you can hear the, the crowd, just the emotion, just the noise in the crowd. I know Taylor Twelman, Jake Zevin talked about it numerous times how it sounded like Prime Atlanta United. And Taylor Twelman said something at the end of the, 
the match that really struck a chord with me. So Lady United turned back the clock. As far as the crowd was concerned, um, this place, and they talked about it during the broadcast, this place was a fortress for Atlanta United early on when they first entered MLS. It's been anything but over recent years, but credit to the crowd, credit to everybody that showed up at mercedes Benz Stadium, the final match of the 2024 season in that building. They made their voices heard. They made their presence known all throughout the match, and I think the players really fed off of that throughout this evening. Yeah, and, you know, I asked Rob in the, the press conference, kind of alluding to what Henry was just talking about, but I said, you know, what does this mean for you personally? This is his, you know, his playoff win here inside his home, the place that he's been for a long time. And, um, he's, you know, he's, he said he was overcome with emotion. He, he said he felt, you know, this is everything that he dreamed it would be. And the crowd had a lot to do with that. And this place, man, it, when I say – it erupted on that equalizing goal. That is an understatement. Right. But when Shande hit that ball in stoppage time, I, I, I'm actually upset. Henry knows what I'm talking about because I tried to record it. Freaking phone didn't record. But this place was <laughs> so loud. And yeah. I know we, we joke around and we talk about the atmosphere in the bins a lot. But it was something special here tonight, yeah. for, for sure. It, it definitely felt like back in the day. And that was one of the things Rob said. He said, you know, I was here when uh, early on when Miggy and Joseph would take off on some of those counters and the yeah. whole place would just build up and then they would hit a goal yeah. and, and it would explode. And he was like, that's what it felt like. And it did. And you just got to give the crowd credit because they've been there through the tough times. They came back here at a moment when really we didn't think Atlanta was still going to be in it. Right. And they showed up big. And it, I fully believe – it is because of the crowd and it was the small things, right? Like the, the chance that you normally do, they were louder, they were bigger. Um, mm -hmm. They came through and it was really cool to see. All right. Yeah. Uh, so adding on to Tyler's little kind of anecdote, uh, when he was grabbing his phone to record the, the crowd reaction to the Shonday game winner, uh, I leaned over to him. I'm like, send me that please. Uh, <laughs> and, until I realized he, didn't really get anything. So, long, long. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, the, the crowd was spectacular tonight. I think Dax really uh, summed it up very well when we were talking to him in the locker room. He said, uh, if the roof, something along the lines of, if the roof had been closed, the, it, the noise would have blown the roof off. Something <laughs> like that. Uh, and it's like, Except absolutely. Thankfully for Uncle Arthur's pockets. It was open. <laughs> But, but, but probably was going to be a, a very costly uh, repair. But, yeah. but no, it's 68,000 people in, in, in the bends. And here, here's the thing, right? As the game went on and as Atlanta looked more and more promising in the attack, the crowd really fed off of that momentum. Yeah. And every time Atlanta was putting together sequences, getting near Miami's box, putting up shots, getting opportunities, the crowd kept getting louder and louder and louder. And you could feel just the, yeah. the energy surging in the building. And that was such a refreshing thing to witness. It was so, so exciting to be here and kind of feel the energy of all those people just, just watching what, what ended up being a very you know, good storybook yeah. ending of a game. Because that was, you know, it, it's the last game last home game of the season for Atlanta United and it ends up being, you know, uh, a huge win. So yeah, it's, it's huge. Uh, it's good for the fans that they got to witness this one, like really, really big moment at the end. Um, and we'll see, you know, I, I hope it's, it's, we get more moments like this, you know, next season and the season after, yeah. and we keep seeing this, this beautiful stadium just fill up. Well, the 2024 season is not over. Lenny United has at least one more match to play. That is going to take us to takeaway number three. What more th is there to say? Winner take all match three next Saturday at Chase Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Miami again <laughs> will be the favorite in that one. They're going to be getting back in front of their home fans, their home crowd. They're going to be looking to shut the door in this series. But Lenny United, just their resilience has been just terrific over these past few weeks. We talk about it all the time. You know, they're playing with house money, nothing to lose. And again, going into match three, they're going to have nothing to lose. They're going to be 
the underdog, yes, but a lot more people are going to be looking at this team and say, hey, you know, they could spring the upset. They could go into Chase Stadium and upset this team. Is it going to be easy? No. Is Messi going to be hungry to really erase what's been a quiet series for himself? Absolutely he will be looking to do that. Suarez, he'll be looking to right things after really a disappointing match too. Everybody on that Miami team, they don't need any extra motivation to go out there and perform in front of their home fans. They're their favorite. They're the shield winners. Everybody's just about everybody expecting them to win MLS Cup, and they're going to be wanting to show it. But Eleni United, they get that massive chip on their shoulder. The FEA attitude, just the strength of this win and in front of a raucous crowd at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They know they have nothing to lose, and if nobody else believes in themselves, they certainly do. And it's just incredible to see that from this team time and time again, answering the bell, you know, coming up from the mat and fighting back and just saying in this series, incredible to watch. Dax McCarty said, we talked to him. Obviously, this was his last home match. Yeah. Though he, I, I was like, are you going to come back? Does it make you want to come back? And he was like, <laughs> I told Saba that if we won MLS Cup, I would stay around another year. Um, <laughs> he kind of joked around about, you know, how for like a month, it just kind of felt like, all right, is this it? Is this it? Or is, is this the last game? Yeah. And they just, and I know this is how Miami feels, they just won't go away. And as an Atlanta fan, that's a great place to be. Um, but you have to take the momentum. You have to take the feeling that you got tonight, similar to the feeling you got in Orlando when you made it in on decision day, and you got to carry that over to the next match. And you've got to remember, like, you've had success there before. You've had success on the road recently, like in general. It, this is not as as many folks want to look at this series as it's not as lopsided as it I think seems on paper. And and as as much as a lot of people want to kind of push that narrative, I mean, Atlanta's fought. They've really fought to to make this competitive, and they did tonight. I mean, they did it again. So. It's not over, as Theon Gregerson says, till the fat lady sings, and she's not singing yet. <laughs> and uh, you've got you've got something to, to really go after when you get down to Fort Lauderdale. You get a little yeah. bit more rest again yeah. because you know you had the week, which was great, but it, it's going to be nice to get that extra few days, right? So um, yeah. go do it. Get a little bit further in the playoffs than you did last year, and. Um, See what happens against Charlotte or Orlando. Yeah. Harry? Yeah, I mean, I'm mostly going to echo a little bit of what Tyler said. It's, uh, you know, uh, you got to ride that momentum that you got from this game. It's it's absolutely massive. Uh, you know that you can beat them now, right? It's yeah. like, you know they're not invincible. You know they're not, like, you know, way, way over you. And I think – that's one thing that should encourage them, but also, you know, in, in two games, you've conceded three goals to them, two of them kind of really being off of errors. I would argue yeah. this one, you know, the, the, the goal that they scored today was kind of fluky. And I, I'm personally in, in the, the boat of people saying like, it probably was obstruction. And I don't <laughs> think that goal should have counted, but you know, that's a conversation for another time. Yeah. And then, you know, the first goal that Miami scored in, in game one was just, you know, kind of a lack of focus right. uh, from from some of Atlanta's players kind of lazily passing around and, you know, giving it away. And then, you know, their other goal was just a bang, right? Like Atlanta yeah. has actually been pretty solid this series throughout two games. Yeah. And that should tell you that they're, they can compete. They can really put up a fight. And I wouldn't necessarily count them out of giving Miami a very – big surprise in game three because this attitude that they've got it's just going to keep getting stronger and you know the vibes were high in that locker room and they really 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 want this so let's yep. see if they play like they played tonight with you know just just that attitude with that energy with that really kind of beautiful soccer that we kind of saw flashes of throughout the season but never saw anything kind of concrete uh and if they can just summon that for for that third game, I think I think they give Inter Miami a real big run for their money. I predicted I predicted for this game, two one Atlanta, 
Yeah. I went the first time I went on the battered. Me Heron too. Show, Let's go. Yeah. The first time I went on the battered Heron show with them, I predicted that Atlanta would drop the first game and then win the last two. So we will see what happens. Yeah. I'm keeping my prediction. Anything's possible. FBA. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, match three next Saturday at Chase Stadium, 8 p.m. kickoff. Inter Miami versus Atlanta United. Winner moves on to the Eastern Conference semifinals. Here tonight, Atlanta United defeats Inter Miami 2 1. Shande Silva was a stoppage time goal to sink Miami and send it to the third and deciding game. Remember, ScotsandSpikes.com. Remember to like and subscribe to our content here on YouTube. It definitely does help us out a lot as we continue to grow and expand. Sydney, Tyler, and Henry signing off, and we'll see you next time.